torque is a concept um, used in physics that's represented with the Greek letter tau. Now, if I have a force, F, and it is acting on an object in such a way that it makes that object want to rotate about a particular point, usually a pivot point, I say there's a torque. Now, if the lever arm, the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the force is given by L, then the torque is equal to F L. Now, if F and L are not perfectly uh, perpendicular, then we have the generalized form that torque is equal to the force applied crossed with the lever arm. Mathematically, what this reduces to is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the lever arm and times the sine of the angle between them. Let's look at a couple of examples. In this example, my pivot point P is right here to the, to the right. A distance L over, I have a weight sitting on my lever arm. And we're going to assume that my, my arm here is massless. There will be a torque produced about point P, a tendency to rotate about point P caused by this force F. And it's going to be equal to this force F times this lever arm L. Now, this is going to be a counterclockwise rotation. In a torque, we know can. Clocks are negative. By, um, quite obviously, counterclockwise then will be positive. So, since this tends to make it want to rotate in a counterclockwise fashion, this torque is positive. For example, suppose this had a mass of mm, 2 kilograms and this had a length, a lever arm of 1 meter. The torque would be the force produced and the force produced is the weight. That's mg times the lever arm. So this is going to be 2 kilograms times 9.8 times your lever arm of 2 meters. Now, you don't have to put your units in there. Um, I guess my lever arm is only one meter, isn't it? Got carried away there. Um, so, 2 times 9.8 times 1 gives me a torque of 19.6. And the units are Newton meters. Now, what about this example? Here, let's assume we have the same mass of 2 kilograms. And I have a force acting down, and that force in this case is 9, or excuse me, yeah, 19.6 newtons. But in this case, the force runs through the pivot point. So the perpendicular distance between them is 0. So in this case, the torque is 0. Anytime a force runs through your pivot point, so through the pivot, then the torque is zero. Now, in this case, I have the force acting straight down again. So my force is still 19.6 newtons. And now I'm pivoting about P, but it's up here at an angle theta. Now put your finger here and kind of draw the force down and you're going to see this force is wanting to go counterclockwise. So this is going to be a positive for torque. Now what is the value of my torque? It's going to be the force applied times this distance right here. All right, so this distance right here, if this is angle is theta, is going to be L cosine theta.
All right. Let's look at this example. In this case, let's assume we have equilibrium. Equilibrium just means the sum of the torques is zero. Your clockwise torques equals your counterclockwise torques. So, let's look at our pivot point. On the right, we have a weight one producing a torque. And this torque is going to be causing a clockwise rotation. So the torque due to F1 is going to be F1 times L1, and it's negative. The torque due to the second set of weights is going to be F2, L2, and this torque is causing a counterclockwise rotation. So this is going to be positive. There are two ways you can do this. Um, to find the net torque, all right, you add the torques that are counterclockwise and subtract the tor torques that are clockwise. That's perfectly fine. So the net force for this will be, let's see, our counterclockwise torques are F2, L2, and then we're going to subtract off F1, L1. If you have a net torque, then you will have rotation. You will wind up with, since you remember torque is I alpha, you're going to wind up with an angular acceleration. Now, in order to have balance, you, ha you can also write the counterclockwise torques equals the clockwise torques. So for this, my uh, counterclockwise torques are F2, L2, and that must equal F1, L1. So I would use these numbers to find the actual torque, torque for each force. I would use this if I wanted to find an equilibrium point or an equilibrium mass. And then I would use this to find a net torque.